Hello and welcome to lesson number five. Today we're going to be starting a series of lessons about evangelism, about how to share the gospel, how to share your faith with others. We as your staff believe that evangelism, personal evangelism, actually going and sharing the good news with people is one of the greatest spiritual needs in our church. Personally and regularly sharing their faith with others. Today's lesson is going to be about the importance of evangelism and a little bit of a challenge for you, the members of your class, uh, for all of us as individuals to find at least one person to specifically share the gospel with in the next year. Now let's be honest, evangelism can be scary, it can be intimidating. It's not an easy thing to do to just go up to someone and share the gospel with them. But the joy of sharing the good news with someone who accepts it, being there with that person whenever they realize their need for Jesus and they call out on the name of the Lord for salvation, man, there's nothing like it. It will make you love the gospel even more, and it will make you love sharing the gospel even more. And just like any other spiritual gift, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it, the more comfortable you'll be with it, the more confident you'll be, and the more you'll want to do it. So grab your book, grab your Bible. We are going to talk about lesson number five, the evangelism challenge. We have to begin by discussing the fact that we are all missionaries. A lot of times when we think about someone going and sharing the gospel, we think about Overseas missionaries going to some other country or pastors or ministers and how, you know, we have we have people to do that, you know. Um, I've had people tell me that before, you know, like, uh, why do I need to share the gospel with people? That's what we pay you for. <laughs> but when we read the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 9, we see that we are all called to be missionaries. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 says this. Jesus continued going around to all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them, because they were distressed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Jesus loves lost people. There is not a single person on planet earth that Jesus did not die for. You have never met another person or looked into the eyes of another human being that Jesus didn't love. His desire, his heart, is for the lost people of this world to come to him for salvation, to be reconciled with him. When we look around the world, it's very easy to see the darkness uh, around us, to see people who are just living lost lives, hopelessness, all around us. But these people are in the dark, and we have the light. They are sick, and they are dying, and we have the medicine that they need. They need Jesus, and he has sent us to bring them in. And there's a lot of work to do. Jesus needs people who are willing to do the job. And in his wisdom, he has chosen you and me, Christians, to do this work. It is not just professional Christians like pastors or missionaries who are called to share the good news. It is all disciples of Jesus. Basically, if you've been saved, you not only can, but you must tell people about him. Now, there are some people who God specifically calls to missions, to to ministry, um, but the vast majority of Christians all throughout the history of the church and, and even right now today, the vast majority of Christians are just regular people. They're just people who go and work out in the world in regular jobs. But think about what great news that is. You're out there where the lost people are. You know how often I talk to lost people? Hardly ever. I work at church every day. I'm around you guys all the time. I don't get that many opportunities to talk to lost people, but you're out there in the world with them, working alongside them. We live next door to them. We shop at the same grocery stores as them. Think about what a great opportunity you have. God has put you in the field where the harvest is ready. He's put you around the people who need to hear the gospel the most. The reality is that evangelizing the lost people in our lives, it's not going to happen by accident. It's going to take work. It's going to take lots and lots of prayer, In some cases, it may even take years of sharing and praying for a person before they are ready to accept the gospel. Jesus is not looking for people who want to sit back and take it easy until they get to heaven one day. Jesus is looking for people who are ready to go to work. Most of us are familiar with the Great Commission. It was the last command that Jesus gave his disciples before he ascended back into heaven. Now, normally when we uh, quote the Great Commission, we're quoting from the book of Matthew, the last chapter of Matthew. Today we're going to read from Mark chapter 16, the last chapter of Mark. It's the same story, but Mark's version is a little bit shorter, but it tells us the same thing. Mark 16, 15 and 16 says this. Then he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. 
Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And whoever does not believe will be condemned. Jesus is telling us to go to all the nations of the world to share the good news. So what does that mean? Let me hit you with some numbers. According to the International Mission Board, there are over 3,000 unengaged people groups in our world right now today. Now, a people group is a, a group of people that uh, speak the same language or live in the same area. Um, they're kind of like their own unique community or nation. And there are over 3,000 of these people groups in our world right now today who have never heard the gospel. They do not know the name of Jesus. The population of these unreached groups adds up to a total of somewhere in the neighborhood of around 300 million people in our world right now today who have never heard the name of Jesus. This is why our church participates in this thing called the Cooperative Program. If you've been going to Baptist Church for very long, you've probably heard about this. The Cooperative Program is a bunch of other Southern Baptist churches pool our money together to fund things like the International Mission Board, the North American Mission Board, and other organizations that send people all over the world to try and reach these unreached people. Now, we also have to remember that when Jesus tells us to go to all the nations, our own nation is included in that. We all understand how important it is to preach the gospel around the world. But we must also remember to preach the gospel to our neighbors, the people around us right now as well. It is just as important. In fact, it maybe has never been as important as it is right now. As our culture, our society becomes more and more secular, we are going to have more opportunities to share the good news. A lot of times people, um, they get discouraged. They, they look at, at our, our society and our culture and they they, they remember how it used to be and they see how much it's changed, um, how, um, how bad things have gotten morally and spiritually in our nation, and it's easy to get really discouraged. Um, but the truth is that the more lost the world gets, the darker the world becomes, the brighter the light of the church can shine. The more lost people we have around us, that just means we have more opportunities to share the gospel right here in our own backyard. Look at what Jesus says in Mark 16. I'll read it again. It's really easy to overcomplicate this. It seems like such a, such an impossible task to go and share the gospel with everyone in the world. Man, it's so big. How can I do that? I'm just one person. But Jesus makes it very simple. Let's not overcomplicate it. Look at what he says. Go into the world and preach the gospel. And whoever believes and is baptized, they're saved. It's that simple. Now, you can't tell all 300 million people who've never heard about Jesus the good news. You can't tell the billions of people who believe in other world religions um, or, or who have rejected Jesus. You can't go and share the good news with all of them. But you know what we all can do? We can all share the good news with one person. And then that person goes and shares the good news with another person. And eventually, the word is spread. I know it can seem like a lot. It can seem like uh, almost impossible. But the truth is that this task has been rapidly diminishing throughout church history. I'm going to prove it to you. Since Jesus sent the disciples out 2,000 years ago to spread the good news, ever since then, Christians have been going all over the world and telling people about the gospel, that they can be saved because of the blood of Jesus. In fact, there has never been a more successful institution, political movement, religious movement in the history of mankind as successful as the Church of Jesus Christ. No other message has spread to more parts of the world, to more people, than the gospel. We should be encouraged by this. The good news is going out into the world. I'm going to put a chart up on the screen right now. This is also in your book. You'll see it there. This is what's called the diminishing task. The number of non-believers for every one Christian in the world. Now in the year 100 AD, 100 years after Jesus, for every one Christian in the world, there were 360 non-Christians. By the year 1000 AD, that number was down to 270. By 1500 AD, there was one Christian for every 85 non-Christians. Now check this out. By 1900, by the year 1900, just a little over 100 years ago, that number was down to 21. In 1970, there were 13 non-Christians in the world for every, every one Christian. And in 2010, just a little over a decade ago, in 2010, there were seven non-believers for every one Christian in the world. You understand what that means? That means that for every one Christian, there are seven people in the world to be reached, for the Great Commission to be fully accomplished. That's doable. Now, before we go patting ourselves on the back too much, we need to remember that those seven people for every one Christian still represent 
almost everybody on the planet. I mean, that's still billions and billions of people, right? But that means that for the 2,000 years of church history, the gospel is going out. The Great Commission is working. In all these years of church history, the kingdom of God has been advancing and growing. This should be incredibly encouraging to us. The thing that makes it really exciting is that right now in our world, there's only seven lost people for every one Christian. We are legitimately that close to actually fulfilling the Great Commission. The work is by no means complete. There is still so much work to be done, and Jesus has called his disciples, you and me, to be the ones to go and do that work. So how do you do this? I, I know this is a lot. We're talking about billions of people. What role can you and I play right here in Willis, Texas? Little old me, what can I do? Well, I can't reach all those people, but I can reach one. The question for you today is, who's your one? Who is your person that you can share the gospel with? In Mark chapter 1, Jesus calls his disciples who were fishing on a fishing boat, and he said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. It says they threw their nets down and they went after him immediately. Jesus calls us to be fishers of men. In order to catch people, we've got to put a hook in the water. That means that we have to actually go out and talk to people about the gospel. It's never going to happen unless we go. Just like you can't catch a fish without casting a line, you can't, sh you can't lead someone to Christ without sharing the gospel first. Whether it's across the world on a mission trip, or it's across the street with your neighbor. We have to actually go and tell. Last year, the North American Mission Board, it's one of the parts of the cooperative program that we contribute to, started this program called Who's Your One? And the idea was for every Christian to commit to praying for and sharing the gospel with one person in the next year. Nothing too crazy, just one person. But think about it. If every Christian in the United States did this, if every Christian right here in the United States took the time to pray for and share the gospel with just one person over the course of the next year, not all those people are going to be saved. In fact, a lot of them won't. But just think if, what if half of them actually accepted Jesus? Think about what a difference that would make in our world. Even if one out of every four of these people that we share the gospel with was saved, it would still be an incredible change in our culture and in our country. Hopefully, after talking about this today, uh, you and the people in your class are feeling inspired to actually go out and share your faith. That's the idea. I want you to be encouraged. So we're providing a handout today to give you some really practical tips for evangelism. Maybe you don't know where to start. How do I start the conversation? Well, here's some really practical tips from the North American Mission Board from the Hoosier One campaign. Um, and it will give you some real world practical things that you can try. The main thing is to, to find someone you know, maybe a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a co-worker, someone in your, another parent on your kid's baseball team, I don't know. Someone you know who needs to hear the good news and begin praying for that person. And then begin looking for ways that you can find natural openings, natural, uh, natural opportunities to have gospel conversations with that person. I know this can sound scary. I, I'll be the first to admit that going and sharing the gospel with others is is not something that I'm just naturally good at. Um, and, I, and I'm a minister, right? I've been doing this for a long time. Um, and it's not something that comes supernaturally to me. Um, it's, it's intimidating. It's scary. And what I want is for you to learn how to love to share your faith. Not just to do it because you feel guilted into it or because you feel like, like a compulsion to do it, right? We want you to love sharing your faith. Look what it says in Psalm 51. Verse 12, it says, Restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. Then I will teach the rebellious your ways and sinners will return to you. Remember what it was like when you were saved. I want you to remember back to that time in your life. Maybe you remember the specific day, maybe the specific moment that it happened. I know where it was for me. It was University of Mary Harden Baylor, I remember exactly where I was. I remember the moment that I decided to give my life to Jesus. I want you to remember how you felt when that happened. How excited you were when you first accepted the good news of Jesus. And I want to tell you something. As good as that feeling was, leading someone else to salvation, being the person that God uses to bring someone else to Him, the truth is, it's just as good of a feeling. It might even be better. 
I know the idea of going and sharing your faith with someone can be scary. But the more you do it, the more you share the gospel, the more you see people coming to faith in Jesus, it's going to make you love the gospel more. It's going to make you love the good news of Jesus even more than you already did. And the more you love it, the more you're going to want to share it. And the more you share it, the more you're going to love it. This is just true, man. I've been doing this for a long time. I've shared the gospel with a lot of people. I've had the privilege, the honor of being with people when they've given their life to Jesus many times. And I can tell you, there's nothing like it. It makes you truly appreciate and understand and, and just love the gospel even more than you did before. And it makes you want to go do it again. It makes you want to go find someone else to talk to about Jesus. It's truly incredible. So this week, think of who your one person is and begin praying for them. Uh, we uh, made a printout for you. Uh, with the It's called the Practical Tips for Evangelism. Uh, it's from the Who's Your One campaign. If you're not sure where to begin, take a copy of one of those and uh, just try out a couple things on there over the next couple weeks. Um, we're going to continue to talk about evangelism for the next three Sundays and the importance of it. And we're going to talk about some practical like how-to things you can do uh, to share your faith. In fact, we're going to have one lesson with our resident missionary, Trey Fleming. Uh, he sat down with me and kind of uh, gave some, some tips and some pointers about things he's learned working actually out in the foreign mission field over these last three years. And if you want more resources, you can actually go to a website. You can go check out whosyourone.com. And there's all sorts of stuff on there. There's prayer guides, all sorts of great uh, useful resources if you feel like you need even more uh, ideas about where to start. So we will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Adios.